A critical section is a segment of code that protects access to shared data by allowing only one thread to execute the code within it at any given point in time. Why do we need critical sections? Running multiple threads of a single process simultaneously does not cause any problems by itself. The problem arises when these threads are required to share some common memory, which could be in the form of variables, objects, or arrays. Concurrent accesses to these shared memory locations without synchronization will lead to erroneous execution. To sidestep this problem, all accesses to these locations are protected. These protected regions in code are what are known as critical sections. How are they protected? Critical sections are characterized by atomic execution. The term atomic execution means that only one thread can execute a critical section in a program at any given point in time. If another process wants to execute the critical section too, it will have to wait until the first one has finished executing it. Any implementation of critical sections must satisfy the following three conditions. Mutual exclusion. Out of all threads, only one can be in its critical section at any given point in time. This can be enforced using various locking techniques. Progress. When a critical section is not being executed by any thread, the next thread, if any, should be allowed to access its critical section. Bounded waiting. Once a thread requests critical section access, there must be a limit on the number of threads that can access their critical sections before this thread's request is granted. After the limit is reached, this thread must be allowed to execute its critical section code. This ensures that there is no deadlock condition in which a thread is unable to access its critical section for an infinite amount of time. A typical implementation of the critical section can be divided into four parts. An entry point, responsible for locking all the accesses to shared memory, followed by the critical section code itself, followed by an exit point, which releases the lock to shared memory, which is then followed by the remainder of the code. Let's look at an example of a scenario where a critical section would be required. Let us assume that the ith iteration of the loop is delegated to the thread t i minus 1. This means that a of 5 is being simultaneously written to by threads t4 and t5 and also read by threads t5 and t6. In cases like these, we make the statements which access the shared memory a of i i into a critical section. The simplest implementation of critical sections involves using semaphores. A thread should acquire a semaphore for entrance into the critical section and should release it upon its exit. Other threads are kept waiting until the semaphore is released but can still gain control of the CPU and execute other code, including critical sections guarded by different semaphores. Critical sections in real life. In the popular streaming service Netflix, with a basic subscription, only one person can stream videos at a point in time. This could have been implemented using semaphores where the code used to stream a video is available to only one thread at a point in time.